Great. Let's move over now to uh, the nose low recovery procedure. Now, if you don't mind, before I start on these bullets, let me ask you to tell me, what is the first unseen, unwritten step? Autopilot and auto throttles off is always the first step. Okay, as we go through these bullets, starting with bullet number one, it says roll the airplane in the shortest direction toward the sky pointer. That by itself will deal with many of these, just that bullet alone. In other words, let's take the airplane that looks like this. Okay, here he is. All right. And what that first bullet says is, we will roll the shortest direction toward the sky pointer. Well, as we roll toward the sky pointer, what's happening? We're putting the lift vector under the sky pointer, aren't we? And then we pull with the assurance we are pulling toward heaven. Say, simple enough, simple enough. But now let's go to bullet number two. It says, with the bank angle in excess of 90 degrees, and this is where the airline accident history goes right down the tubes. With bank angle in excess of 90 degrees, we must maintain neutral to forward yoke pressure. Well, neutral to forward is a big range, isn't it? Well, what do we mean by that? Well, I think, I think you know. Suppose your airplane looks like this. Here you are. Okay? 90 degrees of bank, nose low. Look like this. Well, this is where the neutral part comes. Neutral. You're going to unload toward about zero G, quote, neutral. About zero G. And then, back to bullet one. Roll the shortest direction toward the sky pointer. What are we rolling with? We're rolling with yoke, with, with ailerons and spoilers, because we have no alpha on this plane. We roll toward the sky pointer, then we pull. Okay. Now, how about if our airplane looks like this? This is where the forward part comes. Very unnatural for an airline pilot to do this. But you are going to have to take the yoke of your airplane. If you're anywhere near pattern airspeeds or altitudes, you are going to have to take the yoke of your airplane and move it smoothly but aggressively forward. I didn't know that. I did not know that. When I first started doing these things in the simulator, I buffooned it. Because, see, in my other life, in my hand, in my stick, I had the entire stabilizer of an airplane. I had pitch authority. I could ease forward, I could ease forward on that stick, that airplane, and I could go to one negative G flight and fly along inverted. And if I had some extra energy, I could go farther forward on the stick and go outside, you know how that feels. See? But what I didn't realize and hadn't thought a lot about is the airline, the airline transport planes that we fly, all I have in my hand is a little bitty elevator on the back of a great big stabilizer that is still trimmed to whatever airspeed I entered this mess in. Guys and gals, you don't have the pitch authority to fly inverted at or near pattern speeds, period. Period. You know what I'm saying? You can't get to one negative G with all the elevator you've got. So get it in. Because if you get it in, what's going to happen, and I'm talking about low altitudes, you know, pattern kind of speeds, anywhere in the pattern range. You get it all the way in, what you're going to do is you're going to get past zero probably, depending on where your stabilizer is trimmed to at the, this point. You're going to get past zero, but you're never going to get to negative one. What am I saying? With all of this in, your nose is still coming down. But it's coming down at a much slower rate, which is critical to success if the ground is here. Okay? All right. By the way, think about this. If you're holding this thing full forward in this scenario, and your seat belts are loose, instead of pushing forward, you're going to end up coming right up out of the seat and coming back on the yoke which is why I think most of us put on our harnesses and our crotch strap coming through 18,000 so that we're in there 
to stay. You're holding full forward on the yoke, and even though you're holding full forward on the yoke, your nose is coming down, but it's coming down at a much reduced rate. Now, since we're holding full forward on the yoke, we've actually got a negative alpha on this airplane right now, but that's what's going to roll the plane is going to be yoke, ailerons and spoilers. So as we hold full forward, we roll the yoke, and which way? Back to bullet one, we roll toward the sky pointer. So we're holding full forward, and we're rolling toward the sky pointer. This is keeping our nose from dropping out. As we roll toward the sky pointer, notice that I get to this next one, which in yellow says, apply coordinated rudder. Well, why am I saying put in coordinated rudder since I just said that rudder will not roll the plane at this alpha? But yet, I'm going to tell you to put your coordinated rudder fully in, fully, all of it, right now. Because as many of you know, the rudder in this portion of the roll becomes what aerobatic pilots call top rudder. It becomes the elevator of the airplane now. And these airplanes spend a lot of time in this portion of the roll. They don't roll that fast. So if you'll get your rudder fully in in the direction that you're rolling, it will keep the nose from dropping through. Because in this portion, there's nothing lifting. And if you don't put that rudder in, what's going to happen? When you get to this portion of the roll, she's going to slice out just like that. But if you got the rudder all the way in, it will hold the nose. Now, most fleet aircraft, the nose is, will still drop slightly, even though the rudder is all the way in. depends on how fast you're going. Uh, but the rudder ratio kind of accommodates that. So at most speeds, you're still not going to be able to hold it. Okay. The MD-11, you MD-11 guys that are in here, you need to be aware you have the most powerful rudder on the planet. <laughs> it, 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 and you should know that. In your case, you actually don't need all the rudder. When I was doing this, I did this in all fleet aircraft, and in the MD-11, I found I could actually stop the nose drop. Have you guys ever seen an MD-11 rudder? It's this great big segmented barn door. It comes off the tail, and it goes all the way back to the nose. You seen anything? <laughs> it is unbelievable. So, for you MD-11 guys, use the rudder, but use it judiciously, because it is very effective on that airplane. You guys can actually hold your nose in this portion of the roll. I mean, you can control it. It won't come down at all. The rest of us, even with all the rudder in, it's going to be coming down somewhat, but at a very slow rate. Okay, now we get through to bullet number four, which says, with bank angles less than 60 degrees. So what's happening here? We're holding the yoke full forward. We're rolling. Right now, we got all the rudder in, too, don't we, in coordinated direction? We get in here, and when the bank angle comes to less than 60, what's coming up now? The lift vector, isn't it? So now we're going to go from pushing to pulling. And as we pull back, you won't believe what happens next because your left foot in this example is all the way deployed on the rudder. When you pull back, what goes up? Angle of attack. When angle of attack goes up, what rolls the plane? Rudder, exactly. And that rudder's all the way in. It'll whack. It'll try to snap roll. That's fine. Just neutralize the rudders real quick, okay? Because you want your lift vector up, don't you? And you want it up right now. Neutralize real quick or it'll go on by, okay? Okay, we got the lift vector up right now, and now we look like this, okay? Now we look like this. And then we come to the last step, which says, adjust thrust and utilize drag devices as required. As required for what? Yes, corner speed. For the first time, as we pull back, see the first four steps, what they're designed to do is minimize nose drop while we get the lift vector pointed up. That's what those first four steps do. And now I'm pulling out of this dive. And for the first time, as I pull back toward either CL max or G limit, I look into my cockpit for what piece of information? Corner speed. And as I find myself below corner speed, as I pull, what will I do with my throttles? Max power. At or below corner, max power as I ride my stick shaker. If I find myself well above corner speed as I pull in my G-limit, what do I do with the throttles? Idle. Those two actions will dramatically reduce the altitude lost and the resulting dive recovery.
This yellow on the bottom says inverted, unload, and roll first, then pull. You will be hearing that from your simulator instructor repeatedly. You'll hear it in a briefing, you'll hear it in a sim, you'll hear it in the debriefing. The reason you're hearing it so much, guys and gals, is because the accident history on this is horrible. Airline pilots are doing this the other way around. Okay, what's that? Well, that's an MD-80 flat plate display. And uh, the reason it's in here is because I learned something. Uh, I learned a lot, actually. But this is another area where I learned something uh, that I hadn't thought much about before. I buffooned a couple of recoveries. Is, is I've done this for a lot of visiting firemen now in the simulator and all that sort of thing. And a couple, three times I embarrassed myself uh, by not getting my SA correct uh, for a recovery. And, but what I learned from those is this. And this applies to any flat plate display. Okay, it doesn't matter which airplane you're in, A300s, MD-11s, this just happens to be an MD-80. This is our on it. As you look around, this is the case of the unit with its indices. That is the fixed aircraft symbol. That essentially is part of the case. It's the case. It never moves. It is always in exactly that position. It's the airplane. You are strapped to that. If you can think that way and realize that the screen floats behind you, you've got it. If conceptually you can think that way, you will never wrong, roll a long way. You will never push when you should be pulling. With that concept in mind, what I'm going to do is flip up the next screen. I'm going to ask you to announce out loud after you ascertain your SA, should you be pushing or should you be pulling? And should you roll left or should you roll right to put your lift vector under the sky pointer? Ready? Go. Yes, exactly. Push and right. Because I think you will agree that if you clearly realize that this is the airplane, then is there any doubt that I need to push and that the shortest direction to get the lift vector under the sky pointer is to roll right? If you think like that, I promise in a simulator you'll never go the long way around and more importantly in the real world. To complete this unusual recovery procedure segment of the Advanced Aircraft Maneuvering Program, I'd like to briefly review the proper use of rudder at high angles of attack. As I state in the aerodynamics segment, smooth application of small amounts of rudder coordinated with the aileron will significantly improve the roll response at high angles of attack. I'd like to re-emphasize that we have very large, powerful rudders on our aircraft. We do not want to introduce high side slip angles at high angles of attack by either kicking the rudder or applying the rudder in excess at high alpha. It only requires a small amount of smoothly applied coordinated rudder to achieve the desired result. This coordinated rudder will significantly improve the roll response at high angles of attack. Additionally, there is a lead-lag relationship associated with using the rudders at high angles of attack. That is, you must wait a second or two to see and feel the results of the rudder application. A lack of understanding of this effect can lead to over-controlling the aircraft. The high angle of attack maneuvering demonstration that you will be doing in your fleet simulators will familiarize you with this effect. The pilot not flying should refrain from applying any pressures on the controls, pitch, roll, or rudder. I know all of our highly experienced pilots realize the added pressures on the controls can make it very difficult for the pilot flying to feel and fly the airplane properly. Clearly, two pilots on the controls could result in over-controlling. If the captain wants to take control of the airplane from the first officer, he should call out. I have the airplane. And the first officer should state, you have the airplane. This procedure will clearly define the transfer of control. In conclusion, let me reinforce. 
that AAMP emphasizes keeping the aircraft inside its flight envelope at all times, regardless of attitude. Likewise, in your simulator training, you should never increase angle of attack above the onset of stick shaker alpha, that angle of attack that we know as CL max. I hope you'll find this video a useful review and that your simulator training will be both challenging and productive.